Our first stop today on the Stinking Fish Tour is at Chosen Pottery. And with us today is Judy Diel, the coordinator of the Stinking Fish Tour. Can you tell me a little bit about what the Stinking Fish Tour is and what people can see and do if they come out here to Machosan and Nisu can check it out? Okay, the Stinking Fish Studio Tour has been running for 12 years and it has a wide variety of artists. So people are able to see um, woodworking such as marquetry or wood turning furniture, um, of several potters, um, several jewelers um, doing sterling silver, um, uh, chain mail, uh, beaded jewelry, um, there's fiber artists, there's printmakers, there's painters. Uh, it's quite a wide range of, of work. Here, why don't you tell people a little bit about your, your operation here and, and what you guys do? Well, my husband Robin Hopper and myself, we've had chosen pottery for over 30 years. Uh, we work in a high fire porcelain, so it's a very fine clay, it's a very white clay. Um, so there's a huge variety of styles. Um, we also have the sterling silver jewelry of my daughter Morgan Saddington. And we also have her daughter, um, who's 10 and doing uh, pottery also. Lately, the most recent work that I've been doing uh, is, is the glazed paintings, which are very rare and unusual. I'm one of the only people that actually do that around the world. And I'm using a super fine, uh, almost porcelain-like tile to work on and, and do layers of glazes on top of them and they're fired in different ways. It's a, it's a, I started off life as a painter printmaker and this is um, as near as I can get to painting and printmaking but still in a ceramic world. By living in the, these communities, they are very open to the arts. They don't have a lot of heavy bylaws that prevent you from having home-based businesses, which is what an artist needs. You know, you like to bring the people to your space to, to see your work. Um, they're just very conducive to supporting the arts. Okay, Judy, thanks so much for this. We're looking forward to getting out and hitting the streets and checking out some of the fantastic spots along the way on the Stinking Fish Tour. Okay, thank you. Judy, can you tell us where we're heading right now? Well, we're going to head up to the Machosan Art Center, uh, where there are four artist studios and also the new uh, Machosan Art Gallery. Inside the Machosan Arts and Cultural Center, you'll come into some fantastic studios. And here with me is Leslie Graham Foreman, and she is the founder and you run Touchstone Studios. Leslie, can you tell me a little bit about the work you do here? I'd be delighted. Um, I feel very privileged to be working with the stone. I don't have formal training, but I'm very uh, clearly guided by the stone. So I follow the stone and it's a step-by-step -step process for me. Um, this piece is soapstone and when I touched it and looked at it, I knew it was a grizzly bear. And so I just start carving and I do one, one little section at a time and it just unfolds. And if I'm not sure, I just have to wait a few minutes, sit with the stone and it gives me a lot of clear guidance as to what the next step is. So it's, it's really, it's fun. Another feature artist here at the Machosan Arts and Cultural Center is Cheryl Taves. Cheryl, you've got three types of artwork here on display. Can you tell us what you do here? I do a few uh, different things. I, uh, predominantly, I work on panel. Um, I'm mounting paper onto the surface of the panel, and there's a few works behind me here. Um, what I actually love about paper is its absorbent quality, and I uh, sand into that surface and scratch into that surface with various tools. So I really work the surface of my panel by mounting the paper on it, back and forth with paint and sanding and that kind of thing. Um, the other way that I work is on mylar, and mylar is uh, a polymer paper. It's a plasticized paper. I have an example of it here. Um, it's frosted and it's translucent, so it actually allows for light to transfer through uh, the surface. So I paint on it with oil paint and I draw with uh, graphite and charcoal. And then I mount it onto white paper and that really pushes light through and allows the oil paints to really glow and, and kind of gives a backlit effect to the work. Um, 
And then the third way that I work is printmaking. I make monotypes, and uh, they're done by creating an image on a plate and then transferring that image to paper under pressure uh, through an etching press. So I have a various options here of uh, ways of working in mediums that I enjoy. So, and they kind of inform each other and cross-pollinate, and you'll fi find that my printmaking is showing up, uh, techniques that I use in my prints are showing up in my mylar work and vice versa. So it's nice to have different ways of working because uh, I never get bored. We are in the studio of Detlef Grundman and Charina Logia. Thanks for joining us today and having us in your studio. We'll start on this first uh, table here. It's a, a collaborative piece. Can you tell me a little bit about the work that you do and, and this table that you've done together? Um, well, my woodworking is a fairly traditional journey with w local woods, um, very fine finishing. I like adding natural edges and parts of the natural wood, um, unlike commercial furniture, which tends to be fairly rote made and not very interesting. And we decided to put uh, our work together in this table. These are actually uh, plates. They're steel plates with a polymer on the surface with the image etched on it. And so these are the surfaces that I use to begin my work. If um, you see around the studio, the final prints are usually on paper. But in this case, we decided that the actual plates had a real beauty of their own and they would suit the wood really well. And so we wanted to do a collaborative piece and we just decided this would be a really nice one. And we both have a similar aesthetic and we both love Asian design. And so we decided on this console table to, um, to work uh, together with these three pieces that have very Asian influenced imagery into it. And I think the result is quite stunning, actually. I'm quite pleased with it. We are now in the amazing <laughs> studio of Jennifer Kavari of what was once your barn loft. Hey, loft yeah. Jennifer, can you tell me a little bit about the materials that you're using in your artwork? Well, as I've developed my own style in 2005, I was very traditional and I was using a lot of cracked pottery, for example, and I just thought that it was not inspirational for me and it kind of fell flat. So after observing our peacock on the farm and feathers and how beautiful they are, I decided to start adding layers below the glass and, um, and then by adding recycled objects as much as possible bringing it all together and it's sort of a combination of mosaic and mixed media and um, it's just so rewarding to take bits and pieces of recycled material and put it all together and it creates a whole other story. Judy, thank you so much for taking us around town here. Oh, you're very welcome. Now there's a few other things that people can see and do if they haven't been able to get out onto the tour this year. Do you want to let people know what's coming up here this fall? Um, we're going to have a group show in the month of November in the new Machosan Art Gallery here at the Machosan Arts and Culture Centre and at the same time that the uh, exhibition is on uh, there will be several evenings uh, where some of our artists will be speaking at the uh, Machosan Community House uh, so you just check out our website stinkingfishstudiotour.com and all that information will be up there the exact dates the opening date of the exhibition and the individual artists who are speaking at the community house. Well, definitely look forward to checking that out. And a special thanks to L.A. Limo for taking us around Machosan here today and to you for being our gracious toast. Thanks so much. You're very welcome. Thank you.